his letter called James in the Bible, in chapter 4, he, he asks this question. And he says this, he says, what's causing the quarrels and fights among you? What's causing the anger? What's causing the problem? Now, if, you're, if you've had anger with somebody this week and you had a bit of a fight and they frustrated you and annoy you, it's really clear, isn't it, what's caused the anger? What's caused the fight or problem? It, it's he shared, said, she said, he did this, he did that, he should have done that, she should have done that. It's obvious what's caused the problem and the anger. But listen to James, the brother of Jesus, what he says in James chapter 4. What's causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the desires at war within you? What's causing the anger? What's causing the problem? James says it's actually the desires within you that's causing the, the problem. And, and you want to kind of push back and say, well, no, what's causing the problem, what's causing my anger it is the other person, is, is what they're doing. But James says, no, actually, what's causing the problem is some desires within you. And he's the mind-blowing, life-changing principle that, you're going to push back on this, but if you could take what he says next and reflect on it and kind of open your heart to this truth, it could make all the difference this week to anger, to conflict, and some of the challenges that you might be facing. This is what he says. He says, what's causing quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? Here it is. You want what you don't have. You want what you don't have. The reason that you're angry, the reason why there's, there's conflict going on, James said, is because there's desires in you where you're not getting what you want. And, and in a sense, if you were able to own that, and I know that will be difficult, but if you're able to own that and think, actually, what's going on here is I'm not getting what I want. And, and imagine that you could actually carry that into a conversation, into a relationship, all right? There's conflict at home or, or at work. And, and, and there's an argument or there's tension and there's pressure and maybe it's going on days or just a couple of minutes and imagine that into that situation you say you know what the problem is you know what the problem is here I'm not getting what I want imagine saying that into that situation you're in a work meeting and, the, and there's tension and there's conflict and you say Do you know what the problem is here I'm not getting what I want you've got conflict at home with your wife with your husband you say, "Do you know what the problem is here I'm not getting what I want. Do you know what would happen in that, that moment? What the temperature in the room would do? Instead of it going through the roof as the conflict spirals, actually it would come down. Actually your, your anger and your rage and your frustrations, if you were to do that in the moment and say, do you know what the problem is? I'm not getting what I want. It would bring your sense of rage and anger down. George Nathan, he, he said this, I love this quote, he said, no one can think clearly why their fists are clenched. No one can think clearly why their fists are clenched. Why, why there's anger is the boss of you. You can't think clearly. You can't speak clearly. That's why there's problems in your relationships. But actually in the midst of it, if you were to do the step one, which is to accept the reason that there's anger, there's a reason there's a problem here, the reason that we're in conflict is because I'm not getting what I want. But actually, it starts to bring the temperature down for you, the temperature down for the other person, and you might be able to start thinking clearly. 